Hello everybody, this is Tenacious Earl, and today I'm going to do my best Burt Reynolds impression. You know, I got the mustache, I got the gum, I, I, I don't know. I went to the store and bought some Big League Chew. We were just walking through, it was like the dollar store. I, I'm not really, I don't have a lot of pride. <laughs> uh, went to the dollar store, um, they've got lots of cheap stuff, and... I saw Big League Chew, and I'm like, oh, man, I remember that from my softball and from way back in T-ball. and Maybe not T-ball. I forget when it was really introduced. I feel like Little League, definitely. But maybe maybe T-ball would have been a little too um, dated for that. I, I can't remember. But anyway, I do remember when I was a kid. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put a chaw in. No, I'm just kidding. I... So what's this video about? Um, I'll probably play game seven of this Boston Red Sox uh, project um, simulation uh, in another video. I think I'm just going to stick this to being kind of like um, my uh, information <laughs> adventures here of the last couple of weeks. And first off, I guess the thing to start with is when I began my first Tenacious Baseball League, pretty new to doing all of this at the time, and I really wasn't that aware of ball stat and ball score or strat PC or I score. I mean, I knew these things were out. I mean, I knew I score was out there for sure. Ball stat and ball score, I think after a bit of time, I became aware of that and I actually started using that in that but so when I started that project the first bunch of games I had designed some Excel spreadsheets to be able to track stats and um, what it really consisted of was um, a spreadsheet for each team that had a different tab for every player and so when I got done with a game, I'd have to go in for every player I'd put in his stats for that game. And so it would populate each row. Right. So like a record. So it's a, I'm, I'm basically using spreadsheets as a database. So then I use it. I have another tab that compiles all the batting stats and all the pitching stats. And then I have another spreadsheet altogether for all 10 of those. So I have all 10 of those that are individual teams. And they have like the same format for the um, tabs for the stats, you know, the comp compilation of the stats for each team, you know, and, and they're all in the same format. So then I have another spreadsheet where it takes all of that data and compiles it into a big centralized database. And then I can kind of suss out, be able to do various functions such as, you know, sorting on, batting averages and ERAs and things like that. You know, that 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 was possible because of that setup. But, you know, as I'm you know, as I'm here talking to you about this, um this is not probably the most efficient way to do it. Um and I've had a lot of discussions, you know, so the last I'd say 2 or 3 years for sure, I've been thinking to myself as well as chatting with other people saying, you know, when you're using the spreadsheet system, it's basically like a database, right? And it's not the most efficient thing in the world because, you know, like, you know, I'm going into tab after tab after tab in, you know, the, the Detroit Tigers from 2015 in that spreadsheet and, uh, you know, entering you know, in each tab. And there are better ways to do it. Like, that is exactly what a database is supposed to do, except I don't know how to make a database. I don't know how to design it. I don't know how to get everything squared away and adding up and coming together. And so I got to this point. Now, I have this golf project, Tenacious Golf World. This would probably be something that would be pretty good for it in, in many ways, especially when it comes down to taking the data from each tournament and kind of like exporting it into a database. I don't know if I'd be able to run a tournament from 
a database software. I'd probably have to design a program that then, again, would also export. I'm not a programmer, but I will say I'm working on it on learning databases, and I think I'm making progress here. And so um, I'm just going to kind of get here to um, to a, a situation. I'm going to bring up this screen right. Oh, man, it usually has. I think it's this one. Yeah. Okay. So this is Microsoft Access, and I, I've probably mentioned this in other videos, but that is the program I decided to use because it's pretty much, I feel like it's an entry level database program. Uh, you know, it's made by Microsoft, which usually means when, it's, when it comes to Microsoft that it is either um, simplified, but also not well documented. <laughs> And I will say for the first bunch of time, that's kind of what has happened. Is that it's been it's it's been difficult for me at times to figure out how to do certain things. But I will say for the most part, and so this project was kind of neat in particular because I'm only tracking one team. As far as the statistics go. And I've kind of gotten to the point where I, I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot as far as um, you know what I have designed here so yeah, and, and I have I have a family member who is an IT person who's actually a, like a database administrator <laughs> and so I've gotten a little bit of help from them but I've tr really tried not to because one for one thing it's their job and I really hate to like bother people who have a job and then, you know, I'm sitting there going and saying, Hey, yo, how can you, how can I, is, you know how I would do this in Microsoft access? And they're like, yeah. So what do you, you know, and then they're starting to kind of like talk in these rather, um, you know, a little more sophisticated terms than what I'm used to. And then when I'm describing it, I'm, I'm describing my problem in simplified terms and in probably jargon that is either like spreadsheet specific or, you know, it's just like I'm not talking the same language. And so it becomes, um, you know, I just feel like for somebody, for it to be their job, then have to spend their day off <laughs> dealing with me, like hacking my way around Microsoft Access is probably not, but I, I have gotten a little bit of help at times when I've really just hit a wall. And then it's like, once you, you get kind of like help over that wall, then you're like, oh, wow, that wasn't really as bad as I thought. But mostly it was just, I didn't quite use enough logic or whatever when it came to how I set things up. So it seems like when you're using Access or any database, the first thing you really should do is to try and make sure that you're designing the database in a way that is, um, you know, logical, um, you know, that, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm, it's going to be tough for me to, like, put it into words. But, you know, I, I use, I actually... I actually am kind of like the owner. I don't know much about using this database that I am kind of the owner of at work. I, I'm a pretty good user of it. I, I don't really know a ton about doing querying and things like that. And that's another good reason why I'm trying to do this is maybe I can learn a little bit more and start thinking in terms of what can we do with a database and you know how it can help me in this stuff. So. I guess the first thing to do is say, where did, I, where did I start? Well, I started with Teams here. And so I, I came up with, I thought, well, if I'm going to start this, and granted, excuse me, my pants feel like they're falling down. You can see here the ID is like starts from two. This is not probably the way you're supposed to do it. I don't know what I did. I, I forget. But a database probably should be should tend to have records that have a unique auto number 
that that specifies the records. And so that's what I have here, except this one for some stupid reason starts on two. But I decided, well, I should have team, I should have the team, city, and the nickname and the abbreviation in some kind of a table. That's a good place to start. So here we go. I have that. Okay, so what does that get me? Well, I don't know, but if I'm going to look up, there was some point where I said to myself, you know, if I'm going to do, when I did my schedule in uh, Google Sheets, I had these three letter abbreviations for the team, representing the team in the schedule. Like, okay, well, at the very least, I, I can use that as kind of like an identifier. Now, if I go into the design function here, it turns out that the key isn't really this ID for this. It's, it's actually the team abbreviation. And until I figured out that I needed to do that, that because that is sort of a unique factor I can use down the road, until I figured that out, I was like trying to do all of this other stuff and it was getting me nowhere. I was lost. It really was frustrating, you know? I, I was just, I felt like I was spinning my wheels. But once I decided, once I realized after, and that was actually one place where I was talking to somebody who actually knows their way around databases. Like, well, is the key something that is, that you're like doing your main, you know, digging through? Like, is that what you're identifying within certain things? And I was like, and they may not have said that. They may have assumed that I was. And then I, all of a sudden I'm like thinking to myself, well, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I have made the key the team abbreviation? So I did, and then kind of things started to, to come around for me. So I then had to start thinking, how am I going to take these stats? And the way that this... Um, what I'll do is I'll take the batting stats, but I'm going to go to design view. So this is kind of like... So in access, you've got what is called... Uh, data sheet view, which is where all of the records are stored. And then you have design view. And this is for tables. And this is kind of like, if you, if you, I think if you think through how you want your database set up, how you want a table set up, what are all the fields I need? And do that ahead of time. You can add fields at the end and you can like populate more if you want to, but it's probably best to have the idea beforehand what you want. So I, I said, okay, well, I don't know. This is again where I'm going to put like an auto number for an ID and then the game number and then it bats, hits, runs. Now here's some place that I, I did have to make a change. I'll tell you why. So before player, you see player down here at the bottom of the screen. This was actually up here at first, but I had an issue and you can see that player says number and so now the key is, so what this ID here is it's not, so so this is my my player batting statistics right so every record across is a is a specific record in a game for a player with all of the different stats associated with it right so I have all of these stats hit at bats hit run uh, runs batted in, sec, uh, double, triple, homer, strikeout, walk, hit by pitch, s stolen base, caught stealing, sacrifice fly, and sack bunt. And uh, some of those are just because also when you do your stat calculations, you need to be able to do that. So what this ends up looking like in the data sheet view. So, well, let me just also say, I started out when I started typing these things in. I was using, I was just typing in the players' names. And then I got to the point where I'd actually calculate. And I would say, this isn't right. These aren't, the, these totals aren't right. And then I found out that I didn't spell it exactly right. Or I had punctuation where there wasn't supposed to be. So then what happened was, is I realized, it's at this point I need to figure out how to do a lookup value. And... The way you do that is when you make your player, like if you want it to be based off of a database, and I do have a database, um, which it looks, or a table, excuse me. 
a table which I probably have hidden here in this list because there's just a lot of tables that are running this. That's the player database. Um, what I was able to do is you go in here and there's one of the categories for your data type is lookup wizard. And so then you can have it point to a different table and a, and a field in there and it will pull that stuff in. So if I go here to the data sheet view now, you can see I have and I'll make this a little wider. So, but see, if I were to click on Andrew here, you can see it has a little drop down menu, right? Um, it has all the players in there. So, when I do my entries, now this is linked to a list that makes it really easy. And so, so now you're like, oh, what, for each game, you've got to just keep appending to this. And I have the same thing for, for pitching too, right? Now, this is where kind of like the form view helps, right? So then I, I got to the point where, um, sure, why not? I don't think I really changed anything. Maybe the width, probably save the width. Anyway, so I also have one for pitching stats. You can see it right here. So in the databases, forms, I tend to think of as for two things. Um, one is to view information in a concise fashion. The other is to enter information. And so I started to create some some st stat entry forms, and I made one for hitting and one for pitching. And this is where you use what's also called a subform. And so if you you need to have these relationships between. So I have a calendar. I have. So I have the games, the games are linked to a date, the date's linked to the calendar. I have, and then there's each player. So you get all this stuff coming together. And so you can make a form that is based on the date. And then for each of those, you can have the stats for each game. So this is each, so for game number one for Boston, and again, this is because Excuse me, I have Boston schedule in its own schedule. Games 1 through 54. And so each of these each of these boxes are the stats from that game. You can see here that Brazier got the loss if you remember this game. And then up here I put some buttons I can scroll through. There's 2, 3, 4, 5. That was the 9-4 victory against Milwaukee that we didn't see on the channel. And then here is game six. So, but as you can see now, I have these things standardized. So it will always pick them up. And if I go to the next game, I haven't done it yet. I, I can just, I could start adding it in here if I wanted to, but, um, but we don't have that data in there quite yet. So, but what this does is that, so now I, that, we already saw this, the batting stats populated there, but I can do that for both. I can do batting and pitching in the same form. Um, I could also enter in this data here if I want to, and it will go into the other um, database, which really this, this information here isn't, isn't driving too much. Um, I could potentially link this up to the main schedule I just feel like it's a little too cumbersome at this point. But um, I'm going to close this out. And so now I have reports. So this is the the uh, the batting report that is driven from all that data. So then you have to come up with a query and do all your calculations in that query. That's the way I do it. And then I can take that query data and pull it into a report. And that's what you see here. So... Got to get Steve Pierce a game or two so that way his, he gets off the top of the board here. Brock Holtz also had a good start, but you can see this is um, how that works or what that looks like. This is the pitching stats. And then the other section of this whole, so I have kind of like two separate, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to use a word that, um, I, I can't remember. I'm not going to say the word because I can't remember it. But um, uh, I, I know the word. It, it's schema. I don't know. It's just there's two two separate things that are kept in this 
in this overall database. There's the Boston stats and results, and then there's everybody else's results. And so I'm not really mixing the two. I'm keeping them kind of like separate. But, so then I had to pull in the schedule and results, and that's in this table here. And you'll say, well, why is July up there? Well, I did an, an auto number. And for some reason, when I pulled in the data with the auto number, it decided to put these guys up there first. Maybe it's some kind of like, um, you, you know, the, like the coding for the dates is makes it that way. I'm not sure. I can always do an ascending fill, uh, ascending sort on the date column, and you can see here how this works out. Got the away and the home team. I've got check boxes. I just check who wins. And then it enumerates these things, tells us the winner and the loser. And um, so that's the table. Let's hit. Uh, what the heck? We'll hit yes. So, so then if I have a query, um, my calendar query. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, well, I have the standings query. That comes off of all those wins and losses, as you can see here. And I have I have to do some update here, but I also have this form for the schedule entry form. And so what I've done is I have I've come up, I've put together a database with all of the winning percentages by month. And so this information here is by day, and I can enter in the results this way. And what I probably should figure out how to do is embed my embed the the, the play uh, instant results chart right there so I can look at it on the same screen and everything so well and so now <laughs> after I said that one of the nice things about doing stuff like this is that you can all of a sudden get a an idea it's like oh wow maybe I can actually do this and sure enough I was able to just embed this right in my form here so now I've got pretty much everything as I would need it but there is one thing that I still can't really do and what well what I can do is if I move forward here to the date in question which is 6-9 okay so I've got San Diego and San Francisco I can do this actually I can do I can do this part right here which is my the wins and losses so I'm going to use my Actually, just a minute here. So I've added my camera here. I'm going to use these two dice and we're going to go ahead and roll. So we've got San Diego and San Francisco. You can see right here is the, are the winning percentages. Um, San Francisco, the home team, 400 for the month of April. I should actually add that field here. I will for next time. I'll add the field that tells me what the month is. but. 400 for the month of April, which is around 406. And then we have San Diego, the away team, 566. So that is going to be around 563, which will be this year. So 11 to 34 means that the home team wins. And it's 11, so the home team will win. That'll be a win for the Giants. We'll add that right in there. Now we have Baltimore and uh, the, the Cubs. The Cubs, 555. That's right around 563. Baltimore, 333, which is around 343. So 11 to 54 means that Chicago will win. And that is 46. So uh, we do re re read uh, black first and blue second. So that is a win for the Cubs. Now we have Washington, 482. So that was closer to 468. And then Seattle at 562. So that's at right around 563. So 11 to 36 will be for the Nationals. That's 31, so yeah, that's another win for the home team. Tough one for the Mariners. And now the Blue Jays, 482. So that's around 468. And Texas at 500. 
So right here, 11 to 42 for the home team. And it's 43, and so that will be a loss for Toronto. So Texas will win on the road. So there. So that means those should all be updated. I'm going to bring this out like that. And now we'll look. Yeah, we'll, yep, we'll save the, so that way when we reopen this, it'll be back the same way it was. And now we can go back to our standings query and everybody has played six games. And the Cubs are five and one, Nationals, Padres, Rangers, four and two. The Red Sox will be facing the Rangers next. So now the other thing that we need to do is our TFNs. And that's also something that I've been trying to capture in this, although not qu quite it. Oh, well, you know what? Things have gone awry since I've added this other camera. So uh, let's dump that real quick. All right, so things are a little better now. Um, <laughs> But let's check out term injury and, and term condition and injury table. So, um, and then the till for the notice. That's what I was going to say. There were two different ones here. So the, these are the two tables that I have going on. And so again this is another one where I don't really have um, a, I don't have a form yet for this I just keep adding it in but now what we need to do is we need to go back here for the games that we just had played so let's check out this form again again this is this is good for information too not just for entry and in theory I could click on this and go up to 6 and 10 oh, I guess that won't let me do that but we will go up, we'll go up to 6 9 and so we've already done Boston, Milwaukee. So we need San Francisco and San Diego before this game. So San Francisco was had won a game, but they lost, so they were on a one game win streak. So we're going to roll the black die. And I'm going to take my lousy image off of here because it don't like seem to like me anyway. And as much as I like my mustache, it's uh, it only goes so far. So let's just uh, trim this up a little bit and let's go back to right here. We'll put that up there. So we're going to roll one die. And as we saw, San Francisco, a one game winning streak. That means San Diego, one game losing streak. So let's see if Sunny. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, so they don't get sunny that way. San Diego, they get stormy. So they were stormy for this game. And I, I should, I could add that too. I could just um, put that as conditions in there. But so, um, so stormy for the Padres. And uh, and now for the Giants, we have to see: are they are, are they sunny? No, they aren't. So both teams stormy. We're going to go off the stormy checks, and we'll see if anything comes up. So first, we'll go with the home team. Actually, this time we'll go with the away team. They're both stormy. We'll go with San Diego. Five is pitching coach. One is minor issue with the starter. Minor issues are all this game only, so we just uh, pass that off. So nothing for San Diego. For San Francisco... Three is team trainer white, uh, and then a blue three is issue with non-starter pitcher, and then non-starter pitcher one is uh, reserve pitcher, the relief pitcher. So reliever most used minor issue, and the minor issue again this game. So anytime you get a minor issue, I just am not tracking it for this. So that means that that game is all set. We don't have to worry about that now. Now the Cubs. They're on a four-game winning streak, and the Orioles are on a – 
five game losing streak <laughs> and they make it six the next day but anyway so they are in bad shape but so let's see so four games and oh yeah we also need to look here till further notice and Chicago Almara good eye Baltimore nothing what was the other uh, what was the game we just did we did San Francisco and San Diego well, Hosmer was happy. Um, oh, we're not going to change that. It's okay. There's a half. They didn't get any issues from that anyway. So, Chicago four, and it's three. So they are they are sunny. Baltimore five game losing streak and they get a four so they are stormy so let's go with Baltimore first on the stormy chart black two blue one minor issue with the player this is so it's on off the media column so we don't have to worry about that because it's a minor issue pitching coach or no, not pitching coach we're gonna go five on the sunny local media three minor perk with manager so minor is this game only and so again that's another game that we don't have to worry about any further tfns all right so seattle one game winning streak washington one game losing streak and they don't have neither of them have any happy players or none and no unhappy either so that's another thing so one each so we'll go with Seattle first one so they are sunny Washington uh, are they sunny no they're stormy okay so we'll go with Seattle first sunny full harmonious one batting coach four major perk with reserve five which reserve it reserve infielder and then which major perk? Four. Hero till further notice. Okay. So this is where I'm going to have to get out my... This is, this is one thing I do not have in... Uh, <laughs> Oops, that's the wrong... That's the wrong spreadsheet too. I've not imported this into Access, and maybe I should. So it's the rosters. I feel like it's it's going to be a real strong ask. But let's see who is the reserve infielder right now. More Bruce or Bishop? Let's see. Let's take a look here. Looks like more. So more is going to be hero till further notice. And I'm going to go ahead and slap that in here in my till further notice. So the way you enter a new, let me bring this up. You just enter this. So we're going to put Seattle and I could, you know what? I could actually turn this into something where it was based off of a, a list off of the team table, right? But we're going to go with player. And guess what? More is also hot. So actually, more's hot is going to end as he gets as he gets um, hero. So there you go. So end. So we're going to end this scene. So there. So that's how that's going to work. So this guy is now basically off the table and that's how we're going to do this is we're just going to go ahead and bring up you know we just keep tacking them on and we'll race ones as they come you know uh, eventually washington wants to get strasburg out of there so they need something to come up for them now we just did seattle maybe it will be here for washington although let's see let's see what happens so they're on the stormy side of things a one and a one that's another minor issue, so that will not end Strasburg's injury. Okay, and last, we've got Texas. 
Okay, they, they're on a one game winning streak. So Texas, it's a two. And do they have any existing happiness? No. So that doesn't help them. Toronto, one game losing streak. Nope. So Texas happy? No. Toronto happy? Yes. Okay, so that's kind of counterintuitive. So we'll go off the stormy for the tech for Texas coming off a win. Two and two, it's a major issue with a player. And which player five? It's a pitcher. Now we're gonna have to say which pitcher. Let's roll black again. It's four. La least used oh last used reliever. Okay, well that's one that we're gonna have a tough time dealing with. But we do need to do this because Texas is our next opponent. So th this guy is going to get some, let's see, so what major player issue, they're gonna be unhappy till further notice. So it really doesn't make a difference which player. We will say, we will say that, so is it their closer? Yes, so we're going to say it is their closer who is unhappy, who, who is Narv, is it Narv, no, that's, see for Texas, that is Leclerc, so we're going to call, look, since we're, let's say that they, they had a one game winning streak, they, let's just assume that they got a save, so that would have been the, meant their last pitcher used would have been Leclerc, so... Texas, Leclerc, unhappy, right? Yeah, unhappy. And that's Texas's first till further notice. All right, now we'll go back to the calendar one more time for Toronto, and they're off sunny. Two and one is going to be minor perk, so we don't need to worry about that. So that is how we're going to do all of that stuff. So, again, this is just for, for, for recording purposes, you know, like, you're just keeping records. I mean, databases are really good for just keeping, keeping record of everything that goes on. So we're just going to keep, I'm going to keep track of this. Um... And so, anyway, this is it. I'm going to just sign off now. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions about this, I, I tell you, I, I still feel really a lot on the novice side of things. So, I don't really want to go into too much, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I like using this stuff and I like, it's fun to learn. It's fun to solve a problem. It's fun to identify a problem, solve it. Even if it takes hours, I, a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm kind of like messing with it for 45 minutes to an hour. I get frustrated. I put it away. I come back a couple hours later, maybe a day later, maybe two days later. I get back to working on it, and man, I figure it out. Woohoo! And it just, it's like this relief that I got something to work. So. Anyway, not going to play the next game right now, but I'm just going to upload this and hopefully you guys can see that if you want to try using new tools, you just kind of have to start sandboxing it, play around with it a little bit, go search Google. It, it's helpful. You know, you're not going to get it right away. Eventually, you'll probably, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if someone along the way sees this and goes, Earl. You did this wrong. If you would have done this, it would have made your life so much easier. And then I would have said, what do you mean? You know, maybe I'll reply and say, what do you mean? Oh, blah, 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 blah. And then, oh, wow. Yeah. And then I figure it out. And then I go and do it. And it's just like, mind explodes. So that's kind of what you need. Now, granted, you, a lot of you don't have YouTube channels and can't show. But, you know, show off your stuff. You know, go put a picture on one of the groups. And, you know ask questions uh you know i'm i'm no expert at this right you know I, I it took me probably probably took me a you know 40 hours of work to get to this point and it's still like not finished but it's it's a work in progress and i'm making some progress so anyway i'm gonna sign off thanks for watching this again leave any questions or comments or suggestions 
Maybe maybe spreadsheets are just the way I should have gone, but you know, people like people like me, people like probably a lot of you just can't sit still. So <laughs> anyway, uh, see you back here for some Red Sox action here in the next day or so. Enjoy any of the college basketball you're watching. Hopefully you're rolling out some games while you're doing it or just enjoying some, maybe some good weather. We've got some good weather out, out here on the East Coast right now. So, and it's going to get better. See ya. Thanks a lot. Uh, hang it, you know, keep, keep at it here. This has been a tough period of time, but I feel like we're getting back closer to normal. And I'm hoping by the time we get towards summer, we're starting to see some full, maybe not full ballparks, but close. And maybe in the fall, you know, maybe some, maybe some college football and some football that really feels like a football game. So see you guys.